right ventricular systolic function can be evaluated in terms of right ventricular fractional area change and right ventricular ejection fraction. There are other Doppler and strain imaging methods as well. Right ventricular DP by DT or rate of rise of right ventricular pressure can be estimated from the tricuspid regurgitation Doppler jet. While the left ventricular DP by DT is over 1200 millimeters of mercury per second, that of the right ventricle is over 400 millimeters of mercury per second. Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion TAPC, is another measure of right ventricular systolic function. It can be measured in the four chamber view using M mode echocardiography. TAPC is a measure of right ventricular longitudinal function. Normal value is usually above 15 millimeters. It is a highly load dependent measure and optimal alignment of the ultrasound beam can be challenging. Right ventricular fractional area change can be measured from the four chamber view by tracing out the diastolic and systolic frames. Fractional area change FAC is equal to end diastolic area minus end systolic area whole divided by end diastolic area. Normal values range from 32 to 60%. Fractional area change is highly load dependent. Complex geometry of the right ventricle and the coarse trapeculations make tracing out the right ventricular area challenging. Still, there has been good correlation with right ventricular ejection fraction measured using magnetic resonance imaging. Right ventricular ejection fraction can be calculated using the Simpson's rule. Right ventricular outline is traced out in systole and diastole as for left ventricular function evaluation by echocardiography from the four chamber view. It has been shown to have prognostic value in heart failure, valvular heart disease and congenital heart disease. But it is highly load dependent and can be inaccurate in volume and pressure overload states. Precise measurement of right ventricular ejection fraction is often difficult due to the complex geometry of the right ventricle. There are several limitations due to the geometry of the right ventricle. Right ventricular diastolic function can be evaluated from the tricuspid inflow pattern by Doppler interrogation. Right ventricle can be an open system in diastole with anti-grade forward flow into the pulmonary artery during atrial systole. During Doppler evaluation of right ventricle, the 5 to 10 percent increase in the measurements with inspiration has to be considered. This is applicable to pulmonary artery systolic velocity, right ventricular gradient, tricuspid regurgitation velocity and tricuspid inflow Doppler. This may lead to inability to detect small changes in status of the right ventricle. Right ventricular global function can be assessed by myocardial performance index. Myocardial performance index MPI is the ratio of the time spent in isovolumetric activity divided by the time spent in ventricular ejection. MPI is equal to ICT plus IRT whole divided by ET. ICT isovolumic contraction time, IRT isovolumic relaxation time, ET ejection time. Myocardial performance index T index has an inverse relation with global ventricular function in that increasing values indicate worsening global ventricular function. There is good correlation between Doppler derived myocardial performance index and cath derived invasive measures as well as with the clinical outcome. Myocardial performance index has different normal ranges for different age groups and for the left and right ventricles though it is roughly a little more than one third. Advantages of myocardial performance index are that it is simple to estimate, reproducible, not affected by geometry and assesses global function. Downsides of MPI are the non-simultaneous acquisition, load dependence, variation with heart rate, age and body surface area and rhythm as well as non-specific being unable to differentiate between systolic and diastolic dysfunction. 
there could also be pseudo normalization due to this t index can also be measured indirectly from the tissue doppler it is designated as tmpi corresponding measurements on tissue doppler are tivct tissue isovolemic contraction time tivrt tissue isovolemic relaxation time and tet tissue ejection time measurements are taken using pulse tissue doppler from the lateral tricuspid annulus longitudinal function of the right ventricle can be quantified by tissue doppler methods longitudinal velocities assessed by tissue doppler techniques are the lateral mitral annulus velocity septal annulus velocity and the tricuspid annulus velocity these tracings are distinct e prime and a prime in diastole a systolic velocity s prime and spikes for isovolumetric contraction and relaxation tissue doppler can quantify both systolic and diastolic myocardial function and is less load dependent early identification of right ventricular dysfunction and correlation with clinical function is feasible tissue doppler technique can also assess radial function limitations of tissue doppler include the angle dependence and confounding effects of cardiac tethering and translation regional function of the right ventricle can be noted by strain and strain rate imaging strain and strain rate imaging can also quantify both systolic and diastolic function and is less load dependent early identification of right ventricular dysfunction and correlation with clinical function is feasible as in the case of tissue doppler imaging limitations of strain and strain rate imaging include the angle dependence load dependence aliasing and problems with high frame rates and data analysis here are the first set of journal references second set of references thank you for watching this video please subscribe like share and post your valuable comment below this video